Getting colors to your stainless steel TIG welds is a lot of fun. It looks awesome, and I've learned some pretty crafty ways of getting the best results over the years. Some stuff I do, I want to have tons of colors. And a lot of the times, I have customers specifically ask that the stuff that I do for them have the best colors possible. So first off, what causes the colors to happen? Essentially, the easiest way to describe this is it's a reaction with the weld area itself, with the atmosphere that we breathe, to form a light oxide on the weld surface. Now, to be clear here, there are a lot of applications of steel and stainless steel and other types of material that will cause for the TIG welding to have zero amounts of oxide on the surface, no color at all. There are a lot of things I can do to prevent this oxide from forming during and after the welding is done. So it's really important to be clear about this with whatever type of welding you're doing. There's a lot of things that I can do to make them look gold and shiny with no oxide on them. If you wanna learn how to do that, hang out till later in this episode, we'll go over that. But for now, let's go over some stuff that's gonna get us the best results we're getting some crazy colors a lot of people assume it's about having the best gear and really good settings this stuff for sure sometimes will help but today we're gonna keep it simple so firing up my everlast machine here I'm probably only gonna set it for about 55 amps that should be good enough for what we're doing obviously we're gonna be on straight DC negative for stainless steel and my gas will be set for approximately 30 CFH the main thing that I'm probably gonna focus on is my torch setup I'll be running a basic gas lens a lot of people have these but here's where I think I can get some unique results I have some amazing amazing cups here. These are made by Edge Welding Supply. And some of these cups are built to deliver an extremely high volume of gas in the smoothest manner possible and do it over a broad welding area. These are designed to give you the best coverage possible in the event that you wanna eliminate any oxide at all. So what I'm gonna do here to get some good colors is I'm actually gonna use something like a number eight or a number 10 cup. So essentially something a little smaller. Take a look at this diagram here. When using something like a number 15 cup, which I love using, this is gonna deliver a higher volume of gas and it's gonna cover a more broad area of my welding zone. When we switch to something like a number eight cup, we can see that the gas will now be delivered to a much narrower area. Area. We're still getting the proper volume of gas, but only to a smaller and more specific area. So because my weld is going to be hot as I move away from it, the trailing gas isn't going to cover this area as thoroughly as it would with a number 15 cup or something like that. Now there's going to be a fine line to walk with this, but as I'm welding, if I'm controlling the heat affected zone, just behind the trailing gas, this little area here is going to have a slight reaction with our atmosphere causing a light oxide, which is getting us colors. And it's gonna do so a little better than it would if we were using a bigger cup. So as I'm moving away from this area, we're gonna get better colors. So take a look at this footage here we can actually see the light oxide forming on the trailing area here. This area here is essentially the area where our gas is keeping it oxide free. And we can see on the back edge over here where our trailing gas is falling a little bit short and we can see the oxide forming right away. See it creeping along and following us perfectly as we move? Now getting ready to remove the gas so we can get the weld area to color up right at the perfect moment. The biggest opportunity to get the most colors possible is in the window of time directly after I finish my weld when I'm giving it post flow. Post flow is designed to run after a weld is finished, completely eliminating our atmosphere from this welding area, meaning no oxides form even after we finish the weld itself. It will basically be a brief window of time where the weld is cooling down a little bit before the gas is removed. What I'm gonna try and do is eyeball the moment where I can remove the gas and try and get some good colors as we form this oxide. It's a little bit annoying to have to try and flip up my hood right away. This way I can see exactly what the heat affected zone is doing. You see how I pull it away right from this area at a specific time when it's still cooling down? See those colors form, isn't that cool? We can see the color form almost immediately. Obviously the tricky part is not pulling this away too soon. Removing the gas too soon, this is gonna cause the oxide to form right away and cover our welding area completely. And it's gonna look super gross. This is what happens when people are experiencing overly gray or dull welds. It's excessive oxide that is formed. So as you can see here, we got a hot one as we come towards the end of the plate. Supplying this area with insufficient gas will cause heavy oxide to take over. And this is what turns gray and causes your welds to look super gross, yuck. As we keep the heat under control a little better here, as I post flow it really well, we can see that in combination with better trailing gas coverage during welding and keeping it covered for a longer amount of time for the post flow cycle, this oxide doesn't form and look, we got shiny gold stuff. So when you finish a weld with stainless steel, it's also really important that you supply the filler rod itself with the post flow cycle. 
Keeping the filler rod in the post flow cycle will help to prevent oxide from forming on the filler rod itself. Now when I need to keep a really close eye on the heat affected zone to see when I need to remove my gas, the unfortunate thing is I need to flip my helmet up. So in order to flip my helmet up, I have to sacrifice taking the filler rod out of the post flow. I flip my helmet up, once I see everything looks good, then I can cut it and pull the gas away. With thinner plate like I'm using here, this is gonna require more gas coverage for its post flow and maybe even jumping up a couple cup sizes as well and tweaking your gas levels. For thinner tubing like I'm using here, I'm still gonna run something like a number 10, maybe a number 12 cup, nothing too crazy. I'm always gonna try and cut my gas coverage to a little bit of a tighter area and walk that fine line of covering as much area as I need to to prevent severe oxide, yet allowing me to get those colors I want. So like I mentioned earlier, if you wanna learn how to get your TIG welds completely oxide free, shiny and gold, this episode here is up next for you. It's linked in the description below. It's gonna go over all the stuff I do to keep everything as oxide free as possible. Watch that episode. Go out today to a random act of kindness for a stranger for Pacific Arctic welding. My name is Dusty. Phil and chill. We will talk soon. Peace.